Welcome to the Cadence Beginner's Guide to Angling. In this series of short instructional videos, our aim is to show you all the basics you'll need to get you started, and most of all, catching some fish. Enjoy. In this episode of Beginner's Guide, we're going to look at float fishing on rivers with Avon and Bolo floats, which are classified as top and bottom floats. And I'll just explain a bit about that first. So the fact that they're called top and bottom simply means that they're attached with float rubbers at the top and bottom of the float. And that's really key for river fishing with a float because it means that you can control the float and what we call trot the float down the river. You need to be able to present the float correctly and the bait to the fish. And by now to control the float and trot it, these type of floats really help. So a brief explanation about what we call Avon and bolo floats. And as with all floats, there's a multitude of different patterns and sizes available to the angler. And I've selected three or four different patterns here that I tend to use most on rivers. First up is this loafer float. And the name gives it away really. This float is perfect for fishing bread um, when you're using a bulk shot. And the bulk shot is pretty much the main method of shotting bolo or avon floats. I'll explain why later in the video. But you can see that that float itself is very lightweight but it's a thick diameter and it's very buoyant. That has a great capacity of five swan shot and it's got a, a slight shoulder at the top which helps you to control the float when you're trotting the float down the river. This is a, a bolo or bolognese float and this is a more sensitive version. You can see that it's got a more sort of tapered elongated body and it's got a nice fine carbon stem with a good diameter hollow tip. That helps you to see the float when you're fishing out at range and this nice light carbon stem helps you to cast the float very effectively and easily when you're using a bulk shotting pattern. This is an example of a classic Avon float. In this case it's 2 gram. I carry these from 2 up to 8 gram to cater for different situations. And this float's got a, a wire stem which provides a, a heavy base that's not too thick so that it's not restricted by the float. It means you've got the weight in the float to be able to control the float down the swim and you've also got that nice squat shaped body with a pronounced shoulder again to help you control the float as it goes down the swim. And this is an example of a, a heavier bolo float with a thicker stem and even thicker tip which really comes its own when you're fishing very deep powerful water. So when to use an Avon or Bolo float when you're river fishing? Well, this type of float is quite a positive float and they really come into their own when you're fishing on deeper pegs like this one. So when you're talking about fishing depths perhaps five foot and above and also when you're fishing on very fast shallow pegs but you're using bigger baits and you need that bigger float and capacity to control the float. A lot of the time when I'm fishing with an Avon float, I'll be using bigger baits like bread or meat. And to be able to cast a heavier bait out, you need a heavier float. And that's where these floats really come into their own. It's also worth mentioning that in hard conditions, in terms of windy days or very boily and turbulent pegs, the bulk down shotting pattern really helps. And that's the rig that I've set up today.
So the great thing about this type of float fishing and type of rig is it's very simple. I talked about the float being attached top and bottom. And you can see on this example, I've got three silicon float rubbers. I've got a larger diameter one that fits over the tip of the float. I don't want to make it too bulky, so I like to cut them down to quite a thin size so it doesn't restrict the presentation of the float. And I've got two thinner silicon rubbers that I've cut, one for just below the body and one for at the end. And you'll see that I've overlapped the rubber here at the bottom rather than perhaps having a small piece of silicon on or not overlapping it because it just helps to prevent the line from tangling around. So that's a good quick tip for you. The main line I'm using is, is four pound, which is quite heavy really, but as I mentioned, I'm going to be using bigger baits and bigger hooks and hopefully catching bigger fish. But it's still not excessive. Five pound means that I can cast the float and control it very easily. You can see that I've got my bulk shot here. Just very simply, I've got three AAA shot here and one BB shot, which forms the main bulk. And then I've got below that one BB shot. So just to be clear, I guess I've got around about two foot from my hook to the main bulk and about just less than a foot to the dropper so that the hook can't tangle around the bolt when I'm casting. The hook length that I'm using is five pounds and that will be strong enough to handle the bigger fish that we're hopefully going to catch and I've matched it with in this case a size eight hook which is quite large to mask the bread but I might use hooks so 12 and 14 if I was fishing with a bunch of maggots or casters. So how to cast with a bolo or avon float? For the most part, I recommend that you use an underarm cast. So I'll just demonstrate. I'm holding the line just above the hook and I'm gonna just swing the rig out into the river with an underarm cast. So you can see that I just feathered the line. So I stopped the float just before the float hit the water to straighten the rig out and prevent it from tangling. It's quite a, a gentle cast really. I'll, I'll just show you again. So I'm not putting a lot of force into the float and the cast. And that's because the bulk shotting pattern really helps. I'm effectively swinging the rig out into position. Very effective cast. So we talked about trotting or controlling the float through the swim. And a really important tip relates to mending the line and effectively trotting the float through the swim. So you'll see that when I'm fishing with this float, I'm controlling the line with an open bail arm on the reel with my finger. So I can regulate the line and allow the float to move very naturally down the swim. And by mending the line, which is just basically picking up and lifting the line, I'm ensuring that the float and its passage through the swim is, is correct. It's not being pulled in different directions, which would prove to be very unnatural to the fish. A good tip when you're float fishing on rivers is to add some silicon line floatant. And I like to add it to the line just above the float, perhaps two or three foot above the float. And that really helps you to improve the presentation and float control as you're trotting the float down the, down the swim. What an absolutely stunning river bream. 
caught on an Avon float with bread flake. Get out and give it a go.